and welcome everyone to what is episode 15 of Conversations with Craigle. We're picking up steam here with the podcast, and I hope you had a chance to listen to both parts of my interview with Matt and Kaylee Lovelady. If you haven't, be sure to go back and listen to those. There are a few items in this next interview that we kind of refer to, and it's always good to keep kind of continuity. Uh, it just turned out that way. This was a longer interview than normal with my special guest, and I'm excited to bring it to you. So rather than talk for the couple minutes that I normally would preceding the interview, I will just simply say by way of introduction that the person that I'm interviewing in this episode, part one, we talked for over two hours. And so I ended up having to record, and then I stopped part of the way through towards the second half of our time and stopped the video or stopped the audio, saved it, and started a new audio just so that I would make it easier to edit, but also to make sure I didn't lose the great audio we already had. So I am going to just cut this short. Uh, as far by way of introduction, except to say that I had a ple the pleasure to sit down and interview former Lyndon Washington Lion standout star on the athletic fields and great student. Then he went on to Central Washington to play football for them for four years. He then went into, was going into teaching and then got interested in doing some CrossFit coaching, but his real career right now, and he's getting ready to head off to become a Helena hotshot. Uh, he is a firefighter, a wildlife, a wild wilderness, if you will, firefighter. And so in this part one, we talk a, a little bit about Lyndon growing up, his athletic career, going to college, his athletic career, some injuries, be, you know, his interest of becoming a CrossFit coach, how that came about, uh, coaching for CrossFit, I love it. And we also begin to discuss a bit of that part of his career. And then in part two, you'll have the pleasure of listening to about his uh ultra running and firefighting career. So without further ado, here he is, my interview with my special guest, Lucas Peterson. Stick around through the longish episode this time and look forward to talking to you on the other side of this interview to just give you a few details about the next episode, uh, which is part two. So again, without further ado, here's my interview with Lucas Peterson. Enjoy, everybody. And today, everybody, on Conversations with Craigle, I have a, another special guest, a young man that I met many years ago when he was a high schooler, and uh, he's all grown up now, uh, Lucas Peterson. Welcome, Lucas. What's up, Craigle? How's it going? Good, good. So we're going to just get right into it. We're not going to delay. Um, you were born where? I was born here in Bellingham, grew up in Linden. Okay, so Bellingham, Washington, uh, uh, Linden Lion, go Lions. Yes, sir, go Lions. Yeah, right? Um, and we're actually sitting, again, in uh, CrossFit I Love It gym here in Linden. Uh, just got done with the 9 o'clock class, you coached, then you also did some working out. Some of the uh, athletes who qualified for quarterfinals are getting ready, and so we're just hanging out here. You may or may not be able to hear the rain pitter pattering on the roof. It is Washington State, and it's spring. You were born in Bellingham. Then your parents moved you to Linden. Uh, uh, my parents had lived in Linden. Okay, um, before okay. I was born, they'd moved here. I think a year before I was born. Or okay, so. okay, then, yeah. I mean, so you've spent all your formative years here. Yeah, uh, siblings. Yeah, I have two younger brothers. One is uh, two and a half years younger than me. Okay. My youngest brother is eight years younger than me. Eight years. So the oldest of three uh, boys. Old of the three. Okay. And and so you kind of led the way when it comes to brothers. I'm actually the youngest of five. And so I had oh. an old, older brothers who took everything up before I got there. So they're like, oh, you're so-and-so's brother. I'm sure your brothers are the same way. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I tried <laughs> to lead the way, hopefully in a positive way. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. So- 
what was life? And and, and I say, because we have listeners listening from all different sizes of towns. I grew up in a town of about 2,000, but Linden is a small town. 25, 26,000 people probably. What was it like to grow up from the, you know, from being basically a uh, newborn, if you will, all the way through your years? Yeah. I mean, I don't really know any different. You know, I grew up here. I think Lennon's grown a lot since I was a kid, mm. even in the last few years, I would say, you know, as with most small towns, everyone kind of knows everybody. Everyone kind of is in everyone's business, but mm. uh, I kind of liked how simple life is around here. Mm. Um, and like I said, I didn't really know any difference. So, so now is Peterson a Dutch name? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I think my dad's, my dad's dad. So my grandpa, he took his stepdad's last name. So Peterson actually isn't like, okay, uh, my blood name, if you oh, will. Sure. Um, he took his stepdad's name because his stepdad was in his life yeah. a little bit more consistently than his real dad. So okay. As far as Peterson, I'm not sure. Um, okay. Very, well, I mean, you 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 looked a part of a Lindenite, you know. Yeah, for sure. I, I actually <laughs> I actually had said this previously. I grew up in a town in Iowa called Orange City, very Dutch. Mm -hmm. There's probably more Dutch. They wash the streets during the festival every year and such. And and my family's lineage is German, and it was pretty tough to be a quote German kid in a, a, a Dutch town. But it was good. I had friends and that. It's just one of those things that way back when. But yeah, Linden's been, you know, I've enjoyed it. The people are great. They're kind, you know, like any small town or any town. If you create fervor, people are going to know about it, right? Yeah, for <laughs> so, sure. And, and that's with, okay. I think with Linden, um, you know, especially in high school, I was like, man, I can't wait to get out. Mm. And I did, you know, I left Linden for five, six years maybe mm. before coming back. And I think I appreciated Linden when I lived here, uh, but it wasn't until I like moved to Ellensburg for four years for school and then mm. went out to the Midwest where it's flat as can be. Mm. And then coming back here, it's like, man, I I feel like I took for granted like having the mountains so close and being able to see Mount Baker on my drive to the gym every day or sure. or even to Bellingham or having the ocean so close. Mm. Um, and then just how simple life is in Linden. Like it's it's definitely a good place to be and I've I've learned to grow or I've grown to respect it. Yeah, and, and appreciate it a lot more than I did maybe when I was growing up. I think that's probably true for anybody. You know, when you're young, you don't know any different. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you learn to appreciate the reason your parents moved you to where they moved. Yeah. And, and I'm an Iowa kid, so I grew up in the Midwest, and yeah. and and, and learn to appreciate where I grew up, the simpleness, the the fact that we didn't have to worry about a lot of the issues that my friends who grew up in big towns or big cities had to stress about or worry about or um we walk to school um every day walk to and home, home. didn't have to take buses yeah. you know across town or whatever so very very cool very think, cool. Uh, as well one last thing in terms of yeah. growing up here um we'll probably get into this a little bit later but yeah just the tradition and for whatever reason like the tradition of sports and athletics in this town mm -hmm. whether it's football how it was when i was growing up or basketball you know mm -hmm. Um, growing up here, it was a, something that I was very grateful mm. and I'm grateful for having that because I'm, I grew up loving sports and yeah. I think that's just how my personality is, but also like having that surrounding mm. me in the tradition of like quality athletics and football and basketball and baseball. Like you don't really see that elsewhere. Yeah. And when I was in college, like there was dudes I played with that they lost or they won just as many games as I had lost in my high school career. Like I lost like three games in my high school career in football. There were guys that won three games right. throughout their whole high school career. And it was just like, man, like I'm feel, I feel so fortunate to have yeah. been a part of these successful yeah. programs. And like, I think that starts with me as a kid growing up and watching successful programs and being like, man, when I'm in high school, I want to be like that. You know, I think we see that with like state basketball where sure. you have this whole community of people come in to yeah. state basketball and all these kids show up and they're like watching the high school kids play and that's what they come to know they well and, to and, out of yeah and i think just for those that are listening to this that don't aren't aware so linden um is just has been in the state football playoffs i mean i can't remember they haven't been in the state playoffs yeah. it's harder it's easier to remember how many times they've won the state title but that's getting hard to do now too yeah they like i you think know, in the past 10 15 years it's 
more often than not they're in the state championship game and right. remember the years they weren't in it than the, the right. years they were right right i mean it was, yeah. a, it was a, it's a shocker a you know for basketball with, yeah when in when a christian even Nooksack yeah. now like yeah it's pretty impressive well and and, and you know you had the small schools you had meridian Meridian the same way. When Meridian has had some down years, you're like in shock because it's a notorious program of success yeah. in sports. And Linden especially, you know, in fact, just coming off, uh, uh, Linden boys, Linden girls both won state titles. Um, Nooksack girls won yeah. their back-to-back. But, Linden's you know, the, the, the impressive, impressive boys. board, the boys, the third in a row. The girls snapped Ellensburg's 75-game win streak. Uh, and so it is. It's It's – if you're not from Linden, probably it's tough to play Linden because, yeah, right? Sure. I mean, you're like, oh, no, not Linden. Yeah. But, and, and so, yeah, exactly. But I, it strikes me that, that, that the coaches, and I know a number of the coaches from Linden and some of the surrounding programs, that's, that's the style of program I grew up in Iowa mm-hmm. where the community turned out. In fact, the easiest way to, to rob a house was to do it Friday night at 7 p.m. Yep. <laughs> because it, it just, it was it, everybody, including the police. Like if you, if we'd have, if we'd laugh, we'd have people come through town and it was again, 2,200 people. And if you needed gas, they didn't have pumps that you could, you know, use your credit card to pay and self-serve. You had to get it pumped for you back then. You were getting gas Friday between seven and 10 because everybody was at football or basketball or volleyball whatever and it was that kind of community aspect that unfortunately i think is lost is being lost in some cases um and you're right it it's like programs are and again sports isn't the end all but it certainly is a good you know whether it's sports plays activities in general the community turning out to them it's that whole family style approach yeah. that everybody yeah you're everybody's in your business but in some ways that's not a terrible thing for kids growing up um and such so um so as we mentioned you played at state perennial high school power linden and in division two right uh central you that's went up correct. which is very interesting because i didn't realize you had gone i knew with some people i didn't realize you went off so you went to central what four years did you play football all four yeah i played football for four years there okay and what position or positions i played strong safety okay yeah all right wow as you at your size too yeah i was even way in the lumper a little bit bigger back <laughs> then too probably weighed another 10 more pounds than wow I now but yeah oh yeah. well, i did i actually did now link i mean i'm actually gonna link whether you you, know, you can say I, I can't, but I found uh, your highlight film from your central time. So yeah. we'll link to it. You see yeah, some good work. hitting. and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, well, some of us that are older will appreciate the uh, laying of the wood. Uh, yeah, it's wild. That was my last year at Central was six years ago. It's yeah, wild to think about. Yeah, twenty seventeen. Twenty eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Football, and right? you and you and speaking of Linden, you were in the class. Were you in the class with? Josh Kraft, and or were you a year younger? They were two years two, older than me. Two years older. Yeah. So Josh, uh, Zach, this, yep. Caleb, Newman. Caleb Newman. Yeah, yeah. And, and we see it now. You know, so many years later, we see Zach with kids and yeah. at the gym here, and you know, yeah. and and uh, supporting his wife Katie uh, doing the open, and so it's very cool. Kind it of actually, everything comes around. Yeah, it was actually those guys uh, that introduced me to this gym back uh, when I was in high school. Right, because uh, Caleb. Josh and Luke Christensen, they all. Yeah, I really remember good. I actually yeah. found a video of Luke and his dad doing one of the open workouts yeah. way back in 2013. Yeah, back in so the day. back yeah. in the day, that's very cool. So and you, so you've known Matt for Love Lady, who are it, it just interviewed he and Kaylee. How long have you known? What, did you meet Matt about the same time of when you were introduced to the gym? Or yeah, uh, uh, so Matt opened the gym, I believe, in January of 2013. Right, I started coming here, I think, in late March or early April of 2013. Okay, okay. Uh, because I'd heard about this new CrossFit gym that had opened up in Linden. Yeah, I think at the time there was a gym in Bellingham that some guys were going to. Okay. I believe Matt was involved there as well. Oh, oh, probably Jogo. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I never went there just because it was out of town. And- yeah. I didn't have my driver's license until <laughs> uh, like early January of 2013. So yeah. uh, it wasn't until Matt opened this that I was like, hey, it's close enough. I actually have my license now. So yeah. that's when I first met Matt. Was and I think that's time. probably when you and I, what, you know, I recall, but I recall just all these Linden athletes coming in. And, yeah. and, and actually, so I mentioned uh, my coming to the gym here with Matt. I worked at Homestead 
knew he was training guys up there initially, mm-hmm. but it was too small. Yeah. And so, um, and my son was playing football at Brown at the time and needed a place to lift for uh, uh, winter workouts. And Matt mentioned, came out across, I was like, hey, you're doing this training. Do you have any idea of, and he said, oh, I'm open this gym. And so we actually came for his open house. And my whole purpose was to get Caleb one month so he could lift. Yeah. And then I was going to be done. And here I am. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I think I remember probably somewhere in the 20s of member number or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny how that kind of that small circle of yeah. people has grown. But, yeah. Think, yeah, both of us were here before Kaylee was here. That, so oh, way, ba- uh, yeah, way that's before. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way before. So. Shout out to you, Kaylee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you, uh, so you, you uh, went to Central. Um, what memories do you have? I mean, certainly of Linden, but like at Central, what, when you went off to college, you didn't go with any of the other people. You didn't really know anybody when you went, did you? Or did you have an idea of some other players that you were going to be playing with and so on? Um, I think I knew maybe a handful of guys, and most of them were from Tumwater High School. Mm-hmm. And we had played Tumwater in back-to-back state championship games when I was in high school. Okay. My dad went to Tumwater High School. Okay. Um, and then the guy who was my host on my official visit, okay. he was also from Tumwater. Oh, okay. That, that kind of that connection. So yeah, I knew of maybe a couple guys. Um, there's a guy from Seaholm that was there, Bo Banner, and then okay, a guy from Blaine, James Fakema, who were there. And I didn't really know them personally. Yeah, I knew of them because they were local guys. But yeah, yeah, I didn't have any like teammates go with me. From Linden, at least. In- so you got this kid from, from not a small, and Ellensburg's what? Any idea what the population? Uh, I think the I local remember. population's about the same size as Linden, okay. but then the college doubles it, essentially. Okay. Um, so I I look at it as very similar to Linden in terms okay. of size. And I mean, because of the college, there's like a couple more larger stores, like they have a Fred Meyer there. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's very similar. To very Linden. similar. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't a big shock. And, and the other part is your what four hours from home five yeah, hours yeah you yeah. could yeah you could come home what you know on breaks if you yeah. needed unless I'm, you were in the middle of football obviously yeah. i liked ellensburg because it was close enough to where you could drive home in three and a half four hours but also like on the other side of the state on the other side of the cascade so yeah. it felt like something completely new yeah. it wasn't like i was driving to like western you know you couldn't you can go home on weekends do laundry or have parents check up on you yeah yeah or if you did like it was it was a drive so it wasn't yeah it's not cross country. It's not in a different state, but also it seemed like it was definitely not Linden anymore. Well, and in, in, in probably during, uh, of course, I haven't lived on the other side of the Cascades, but climate wise, more dry, a little drier, a little bit more sunshine, a yeah. little colder in the winter. But uh, yeah, I find I like the sunshine, even if it's colder than maybe it's what we have right yeah, now. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And, and and I, on the other hand, with fair skin live in washington and, and here because you can't get skin cancer for rain yeah, so yeah. i look at it like you know i'm at, I, I can go to the sun i don't want to be stuck in the sun yeah, if, if you know fair. what i mean and like part of that is growing up in iowa we're the same thing you know it was blazing hot anyway so cool so what other memories like do you recall any kind of memories about heading off to college or your experience doing football or uh any any things you do differently now that you're older and yeah um i mean i remember it playing college football is one of my dreams as a kid um i grew up in like the usc era with mm-hmm. reggie bush matt liner and so it was like a dream of mine to go play at usc uh mm-hmm. which obviously didn't happen mm-hmm. i played at a d2 school yeah um but i think regardless like playing college football was always a dream of mine and uh i had a few other options i could have gone but at the end of the day i wanted to play football and Fortunately, despite like an injury or two I had in college or in high school, going into college, the the coaches at Central still wanted me. And mm-hmm. uh, when I went there for my visit, I was just like, "Man, this this feels like the place I'm supposed to be." So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, going to college, I was really excited for it. Mm-hmm. I was at that point ready to get out of London, kind of go off on my own, play football at the next level, and kind of live out something that I'd wanted to live out for several years at that point. I mean, my whole life, really. Yeah. Um, Going into Central, I'd had uh, shoulder surgery in January of my senior year. Mm. Uh, so I did track instead of baseball just to kind of get into shape for that. And then I remember the summer going into my freshman year at Central, I worked on a berry farm in town and I worked on a dairy farm in town. So I worked <laughs> on two different farms here. Okay. And then I was also training for the football season. So yeah. it was a pretty busy summer for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
yeah, I remember um, heading out there fall camp as a freshman. You know, it's August in Ellensburg, wildfire smoke everywhere. It's hot. Back then, two days were still a thing, so we were doing two days every other day, every every day or so. And I just remember it being a long fall camp in August. Yeah, um, but it was good. But I mean, in some ways, though, and we'll get to down the line. But it was a a chance, and you worked certainly hard. I mean, at Linden, you know, the coaches uh, and. At, back then, uh, like I think, is it Blake Van Dalen is the coach now? Who was Kirk Cramey? Cramey was Coach Cramey, coach, yeah. yeah. Memory eternal to Coach Cramey, yeah. yeah. A great coach and a great person, well loved in Linden and yeah. and beyond. Absolutely. Um, d- you know, uh, didn't know him personally, but everything. It's one of those things where when you say Kirk Cramey, even the people in the county. And, and really across the state of Washington, know who you're talking about. So, yeah. Um, so, One thing about Kirk Cramey, I think if it wasn't for him, I mean, I had a lot of great coaches growing up. Mm. Uh, my dad coached me. I think he instilled the passion that I have for football and athletics in me from a, a young age. And then throughout my first few years applying football, he was my coach. So, mm. like, that was great. Having my dad, somebody who loves football, he kind of instilled that in me. And then – uh I had Ed Palmer as my eighth grade football coach. Who yeah. He now coaches at the high school. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, Ed Palmer has got a couple kids in town still. Yeah. Um, both great athletes. Yeah. Both still involved in athletics. Like, well, he, he the kind of, Brady and Blair, right? Yeah. yeah and Brady's, uh, what, girls, Linda Christian girls basketball coach. Yeah. And so they've stayed in the community. Yeah. And so I think yeah. Ed, Ed Palmer, he taught me a lot. Like, it was the first year really playing in Linden's system. He moved me from, me playing defensive end to playing defensive back, which was like in eighth grade was a big move mm. for me going yeah. from playing down near the ball to all of a sudden I'm playing corner. Yeah. Um, but as far as coach Cramey goes, like he instilled a confidence in me. He believed in me when I didn't really believe in myself in certain times mm. of my career. And I think that plus his knowledge of football, like that mm. dude watched more film than anybody else I yeah. have known. So just his instilling of confidence in me and then, his knowledge of the game yeah, something that he like passed on to his players, but me specifically just cause I was so absorbent of the information that he was giving us. Like shout out to that guy. Yeah. It wasn't for but he loved, I mean, again, what I've read and talked to people over the years, you know, he loved his players. And when you, I won't say there are people that didn't have issues. Everybody has issues with everybody. But when you talk about coach Creamy, he's one of those people that you go, you know, he, was impactful on my life yeah. even even if he wasn't because i don't know do you remember was he a teacher also yeah he, he was te- a he was a teacher at and, and so i mean he you know just the those are the uh, special people not just coaches but the impactful that help us mine was ken dober my basketball coach mm-hmm. um hard and he, you know a hard guy but loved you yeah. trained you instilled in you um, and, and those are the ones that impact you for the rest of your life. So yeah. good, good for them. And yeah, like I said, uh, a special person in a special town. Yeah. So that's it's, very cool. You expected excellence, you know, yeah. at that point, like when I got to high school, Lyndon had won a state championship in 06 and then 08 and 09, I was actually a ball boy for the high school football team. So I was like kind of around, yeah. um, which I think was big for me just seeing like what it took. Right, and then I didn't play at all my freshman year on the varsity team. Yeah, um, but by the time the playoffs rolled around, we get the fr- some freshmen get like called up and yeah. get to suit up with the varsity and practice with them. So I got I don't know four or five weeks of practice against like the varsity state yeah. championship team, and then the following year as a sophomore, I got a good amount of playing time, especially in like the second half of games when we were winning by forty points because <laughs> we were so dominant back yeah. then. Yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. So then for by sure. the time it was like my junior year and all that class of in front of us a couple of years graduated like it was it was our time to and you guys you guys won did you win both your junior and senior year uh so we won my freshman year which i wasn't super involved with but yeah still practiced for yeah, yeah. five six weeks with them my yeah. sophomore year we won my junior year we won and then my senior year we lost in the state championship game okay so to we to cedro woolley cedro woolley yeah. that's right well that was the, you, probably the one year that cedro woolley had and, and yeah, they yeah, were good. They, they were, were good. good they moved up. They keep moving up and down. Two A, three A, two A, three A, so on. So yeah, yeah, it just happened to be one of those things. That's very cool. 
So let's shift gear. So we talked a little bit about college, one jump off point. What would you say to a person? Well, let's speci- specify a young man, you know, from London or whatever that's listening. They want to play college football. They're freshmen. What would you tell them? Yeah, that's a good question. First and foremost, and this is going to sound cliche, but it's cliche because it's true. You have to be the hardest worker in the room. You have to do the little things right. And I think everyone kind of says, well, I work hard. I'm a grinder or whatever. But like, you need to do that and then some. Uh, Because at the next level, like everyone's like that. Um, I also think like little things matter, like being a good teammate, doing things in the weight room correctly, uh, doing things in the classroom correctly, being a good person. Uh, I don't think that I would have had certain opportunities if I hadn't been a good teammate, you know, because I had some injuries in high school that cut some of my season short, but I was a good teammate throughout that time. And I think like your character can carry you a long way, you know, so get in the weight room and do it correctly, work hard. Uh, We used to stay after in the summer, we used to stay after our conditioning. I don't think McKee knows this, but we used to turn on the, the lights at the football field Mm. at 9 p.m. at night in the summertime and just run routes. Mm. Uh, and we would just hope that McKee wouldn't see it from his house, the mm. athletic director, yeah. And, yeah. and come down there and shut it off. So we'd be out there pretty late at night into the dark running routes and just getting extra work in. So I think, yeah, in terms of playing at the next level, whether you want to play D3, D1, D2, whatever it is, like if you want to get there, it's going to take hard work. It's going to take discipline, mm. sacrifice, and being a good teammate, being a good person. So it can take you a long way. It, were you a good student? Yeah, I was a, yeah. I was a good student. Yeah. Uh, so so A's, mostly A's, yeah. A-B's. Yeah, I was in, took AP classes, yeah. um, mostly A's. I, was, I wasn't a 4.0 student yeah. by any means, but yeah. yeah I, I, think that, I think that's what strikes me too. Uh, and again, I think of, of the, those that I know have played at the next level. Uh, being a good student can carry you a long way too. I mean, yeah, yeah. you need to be, have an athletic yeah. But so many are athletic, but don't have the, you know, unless you're one of the, the 0.01% your classroom work and, and, and the ability to get on, stay on the team or stay with the football team or whatever sports team yeah. classwork is going to matter yeah. at, at the next level. So being a good student it, all the way from your freshman year and learning to do that yeah. uh, is, is important. One of the first things I learned I, when I got to central was a thing where coaches were saying, don't be a list guy. Mm-hmm. And what a list guy is, is a guy who's on a list for having bad grades, showing up late to meetings, showing up late to class, uh, not doing what they're supposed to do. So there's a list of guys and it's sometimes long, sometimes short, but it's a list of guys that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. They're called list guys. And you don't want to be that guy. You mm-hmm. want to be a guy that even if you're like going under the radar a little bit, that's better than being on the wrong side of, of things. You know? And that's I true. Think- actually, that carries over to your your adult life yeah 100 percent. whether mean, it's high school whether it's college football fire or, service yeah, fire service like you don't want to be i guess an example of bad things where you're doing something bad and you're getting the recognition for not doing what you're supposed to do yeah. it's better to get no recognition at all for doing the right thing <laughs> right to get recognition for not doing the right thing right for sure that's very cool very cool so we're going to shift gears here for a second and talk a little bit, since we are in CrossFit, I love it. We'll talk a little bit about um, CrossFit coaching, the Open 2024. You mentioned you started CrossFit as an athlete in 2013. When did you start coaching CrossFit? Yeah, so I started uh, as an athlete here in 2013. Uh, I think at the time Matt had like a, it wasn't the main CrossFit class. I think he had like a more sports specific, like, youth class for high school students that are playing athletics playing sports so we would do a lot of crossfit movements but it was a little different programming than okay um what a normal crossfit class was looking like so we did some more like turf drills yeah like ladder footwork stuff more explosive movements yeah so i came here in 2013 did it a little bit in 2014 as well uh going into my senior year uh playing football and then i took quite a bit of time off from crossfit did a lot of Olympic movements and weightlifting throughout college. And then after college, you know, as a college athlete, you're doing a lot of Olympic yeah. movements in the gym, uh, working on getting fast, strong, explosive. So I did a lot of that. And then I came back to the gym in 2021 for, I would say five, six months before my first year working for the forest service. Okay. Um, and then 
I didn't start coaching until October of 2023, less than six months ago. Yeah, so this is yeah. So you're you're one of the one of the coaches. We and you kind of come and gone over the years uh, with life. Just you know, number of coaches have gone to other places, been married, or you know, life just taken them somewhere else. But so uh, I did notice because I am the one who does the website, so I'm posted your your profile, but I hadn't realized you hadn't coached prior to that. So, yeah. so what, what, um, what do you love about coaching at the gym or, you know, CrossFit, uh, classes? Yeah. I love the community. Um, that's part of the reason I wanted to get involved in coaching. And at first I, I don't, I, I didn't think that a coaching CrossFit was going to be the path that I was taking. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of had a few ideas of like different things I wanted to do during the summer because I worked for six months of the year and then I have a six month off season. So during the summer when I was working, I was like, I need to figure out what I'm going to do that can be productive. That can, I can surround myself with a community of people in my off season. And so I thought about like getting a job working at Homestead, for example, like as a front desk person, just so I could be in like at the gym environment. Mm -hmm. Um, thought about maybe getting like my personal training certification. Uh, but this last summer I was working in Missoula. I met a guy who, is a smoke jumper out there and he coaches CrossFit in his off season. And around that oh. time I was, you know, hoping to apply and try and get onto a hotshot crew for the following summer fire okay. season. Right. Um, and I was like, I think CrossFit is like a good way for me to build my functional fitness, build upon my endurance. Cause I am a pretty avid distance runner now. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking like, I think CrossFit is kind of like the Avenue that I want to start adding into my life or like the modality of exercise I want to start adding into my life. So I was thinking about like Kaylee posts all the, or you post the programming on the yeah. website. Yeah. Um, so I was like starting to do some of that programming when I was in Missoula this summer on my free time. Hmm. I met this smoke jumper who also coaches CrossFit and I just felt like, man, maybe I should look into like coaching CrossFit. So I messaged Kaylee uh, over Instagram and I was just like, Hey, like what's the process to get your level one certification? And I didn't ask her like, Hey, I'm going to coach it. I right. love it. I was just like curious. Yeah. Um, and I have known Kaylee for some time now. So she messaged me back and told me kind of like what they expect out of coaches. And I was like, awesome. Like, thanks so much for the information. And at that point I was like pretty interested in getting my certification and going from there. And then Matt calls me a couple of days later and like, mind you, I haven't talked to Matt in years at this point. Right. He calls me out right. of the blue and he's like, Hey man, like Kaylee was saying you're interested in coaching. Like if you want to coach here, like we would love to have you. And I was like, Oh wow. That's this is incredible. Like there would be such an amazing opportunity. I think this was maybe July or August at this point. I was like, yeah, like that's the route I want to go. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to coach. And so this is in July, 2023. So a yeah. year ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, so or last I was in year. Missoula during the fire season, Matt calls me, tells me like, Hey, we'd be interested in you coaching here. Like here's kind of the steps you need to take. And after talking with him and Kaylee, it was like, yeah, this is, I think this is going to be a good idea. So after my fire season ended in early October, I went out down to Portland, got my, a level one training certificate mm -hmm. down there through CrossFit. And then, uh, yeah, Matt and Kaylee brought me on as a coach. Well, I, well, walked you through the uh, overseeing you. You know, you had to have the oversight coaching. Yeah, you know, did the shadowing. They were there, the shadowing and the co -coaching. so forth. Well, and, and it also makes, it strikes me, not, the, the, not, not just the relationship you had with Matt as an athlete, you know, young athlete, but you being fire service, he is fire service as those who will listen to the podcast that's before this one, you know, the episode yeah. with Matt and Kaylee, you'll talk, we talk a bit about his fire service journey. So that aspect probably is, is somewhat of it too. He, he knows you and had known you. So even though you hadn't talked, those relationships pick back up like, you know, and you're a quality person. If you were a, if you were a list guy, yeah, might not be exactly. on a coach. So exactly. yeah, and 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 all the coaches, uh, you know, I've known all the ones through the years. Um, you know, the one thing I appreciate about CrossFit, I love it, is you know, none of the coaches are list coaches. They're not list people. They're not people that you'd see on lists except for good lists. Yeah, and so that's what is it makes such a quality community is that aspect, and so. Um, that's very, very cool. Yeah. So how has coaching helped you as an athlete and a person? Yeah, that's a great question. I think as an athlete, um, I have my own limitations just with some injuries that I have. Mm -hmm. So coaching has allowed me to think about for myself, certain scales that other members can do, but then what I can do, it's helped me 
learn more about how certain movements are done, particularly like Olympic movements that I try and, and stay away from, like the overhead squat or the snatch. Like I haven't done those in years uh, uh, because of some shoulder injuries that I've had. So I think as an athlete, like learning about those movements, how I can help coach the members who can do those movements, especially the members who are very good at them. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we have high level athletes at this gym who've been doing this for years and like they can snatch hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't do that, but as a coach, I can learn how they can improve. Right. And so that helps me as my, like as an athlete myself, Hey, here's how these high level athletes can improve. And I think that just helps me in myself improve my own movement. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and I think part of it is, is, you know, you hear so many coaches are RX, RX, RX. And for you to, you know, the openness and, you know, the vulnerability to, to, to say, you know, you have injuries, you have to scale. Yeah. You're not riding this wave of, of RX pride, but you're like, I relate. I can coach you in the movement patterns and like you're saying yeah, for the high nice. level, but you can relate to the scaled athlete that it's not lesser. You're just moving where you are yeah. and you're learning to you know, maybe find more mobility, more um, uh, what you can add a little extra to, but also be smart that you're not going to injure yourself given some of these limitations that maybe aren't able to be completely overcome for sure that you just simply have ways you have to just face that okay this is what i can do but i can do these well yeah i think uh yeah. part of it's like for me is putting my ego at the door when i walk in yeah not a, not even just as an athlete but as a coach as well as a former athlete you know i want to i'm competitive and i want to lift as heavy weight as possible or do as many reps as possible but that's my ego getting in the way mm -hmm. and i think it's important for me as an athlete to put my ego at the door and just be like, Hey, I'm going to meet myself where I am today. Mm. And if that means I'm not going to squat or clean or deadlift what I used to be able to do or what I even did last week, mm. like how my body's feeling this week might be different than last week. I think that's been big for me. Mm. just like meeting myself where I'm at. Um, and hopefully the members can see that too. Like, yeah. Hey Lucas, he's not, he's not doing this today. Cause he has whatever going on. Like yeah. it's okay if you, don't want to push through something that could make an injury or a little niggle worse that gives people that the, that the safe not safe place but that that confidence to be open and say hey you know what yeah i'm not feeling great okay and you and i think that again that's what i appreciate i know there are plenty you know quite a few gyms out there to do this but one thing i can say you know uh, we'll stand on a soapbox is i love it really focuses on good movement uh, good sure. movement for everybody, good movement, you know, standards. But they're also there to help people whether at to move safely. And and so often I remember when I first started doing CrossFit, I got I'd be injured. i you know, I continued but I continued to drive through because I didn't want to admit I had scale issues or mobility issues. And you can't coach somebody who's not open, you know, through that. But the coaching here has gotten so good at that. And I've seen you the same way that, you know, uh, you check with people and then you, you modify. Uh, if you see somebody moving poorly, you, the coaches go and, and and that's good. That's what yeah. we need. That's what the members need. And as coaches, it's good too, because you keep everybody safe. So yeah. that's very cool. What I love about CrossFit, specifically this gym, is like the demographic of people that come together and do the same workout. Mm. Like you have people like Mitch and Carrie and JT and Alina, who are these like high level athletes that have gone to the games before. Mm. And they're doing the same workout with Matt, who's a Seattle firefighter, or some lady who's new to the gym. Right. For like, she's never been to the gym in her entire life. And it's like her third week in class. And like, then you got some somebody who's dealing with like an injury that. Is just cleared to start working out again, yeah. and they're all doing the same thing. You got old people like me, and yeah. Get old Bill people Stevenson, like you and, and yeah. Eric Beamer. Although I, I'm convinced Eric's not old. I don't know what <laughs> he's got, but I'm going to figure out what water he's drinking in Linden. But yeah, I mean, there's there is there's a great diversity of people doing the same stuff, and and your high level athletes are, are in classes with everybody else yeah they're and not separated yeah. out it's not or... like some of these people who aren't the high level athletes are putting up the same amount of weight yeah or doing the same number of reps or even doing the same exact movements because there's right. scales and modifications that need to be made but right. for the most part like 
everyone's doing pretty much the same thing yeah. just to their level that they can do it. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. Cause the human body is like made to move and yeah. with the amount of functionality in a lot of these movements. And, um, I just think it's, it's a beautiful thing as yeah. a coach, like being able to take a step back and like, look at the yeah. people in the class and like who you have. It's like, you got Mitch up front deadlifting like 450 pounds. And then you got someone in the back, like deadlifting a kettlebell. Cause that's yeah. all they can do for the day. There's no problem with that. Right. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I yeah. It's super. Cool. Yeah. And, and, and I think the, the great part too, I will just give a shout out and, uh, is the athletes still train unbelievably, but I mean, Mitch is content, not just content. He wants to be in the classes. His wife, Carrie, you know, quarter finalist again this year. And, and uh elena blankers you know 10th in the world in the 14 and 15 girls um all are in classes and none of them are like disgruntled none of them see it as any less it's just they're part of the community this yeah. is what they do and they add extra work on their own but it's that that humble community aspect that makes it such a a, a, a great experience yeah. a great gym to come together with so that's yeah. so cool i think for people like mitch and carrie i think for them it's inspiring to see like the mom who's got her kids like in the yeah. back in their stroller coming in and like still working out yeah and dealing with their kid who's like starts crying and has to go to the bathroom i think it's inspiring <laughs> yeah as a yeah. coach it's cool to see that like yeah it's like hey you have your kids here they're watching you work out they're watching you do something that's challenging right. that's inspiring right. and not to mention like yeah your kids starting to cry and has to go to the bathroom in the middle of the workout and you just deal with it and then you come back and jump yeah. right back into the workout like that's super inspiring yeah i know on the other side like for those ladies or gentlemen who aren't at the high level that mitch or whoever it is is at it's inspiring to see them too because it's yeah. like hey here's here's a high level athlete getting after it like yeah. i may not be that but i'm gonna do my best and you I can you can watch you watch somebody do it the way it's supposed to be done and then you do what you can do in the midst of yeah. it yeah it's so cool you're right. So the open just happened. You did the open. Yeah. Was that your first or had you done the open before? It was my first one. I, I, I thought I noticed that because when I checked your, your pink athlete page, I thought, I could have swore you would have done it before, but no. No. Uh, I've, I've, uh, but, but it was good. I kind of purposely avoided it because I get super competitive. Oh, okay. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you, you, you did a couple of the workouts scaled. Yeah, yeah. So I did the first one scaled. Yeah, um, and then. But you, you still, you were in there. You moved. You did. You get. Yeah. Were you wrecked at the end of it? Even though it was scaled. Not that one. I was. Oh, okay. Wrecked with that I, one was kind of. I'd like to scaled. redo. I, I was talking to one of the. I, I'd, I would love to redo, but I've committed to one and done, because, you know, as I mentioned to you, you know, Saturday class. I was still feeling the effects of the open a week later. Yeah, so, that's fair. Uh, you know, it is. Well, that's cool. Congratulations on your first open. It's Thank so you. cool. Why did you sign up for the open? Um, I think as a coach, I kind of felt obligated to. Okay. Not that I needed to. Um, yeah. I just felt like it'd be a good example to set as a coach. Like, hey, it's your coach here and it's you've never done the open before. Like, sign up for it. It's cool for other people who have done it before who haven't done it before to see that like one of their coaches is doing it for the first time i think yes yeah, it's, yeah it's absolutely i mean the, 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 i hadn't looked so i i just assumed made the assumption you had done it before uh but when i saw that but yeah i mean to me i look at it and go um i mean if people don't they don't but it, if you there's really no good reason not to because again you can scale they have foundations they have and and even if you can't do it where you get a score you can still come in and do it yeah. Um, sometimes I think it takes the negative approach of it's just a money grab, but there, the, the community aspect here is, is very cool with that. So, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, did you, cool. did you have any goal? Like when you signed up, was there any kind of approach of not so much a competitive, but what were your thoughts of goal wise of, of, you know, uh, I wouldn't say I had any goal. I just wanted to, to do it, be a part of it. Okay. Especially it was fun being a part of Friday night lights. So what did you learn about yourself doing the open? Uh, once again, I'm too competitive with myself and it's all right. <laughs> it's all right to pull my ego at the door. Like I was yeah. saying earlier and yeah, even more so I think, um, uh, than I already do it's Okay, right to, to scale. And there's no shame in that. I'm not no. competing for quarterfinals. I'm not trying to go yeah. to the game. So like, there's no point in me pushing yeah. too hard and right. trying to hurt myself. Or... And you, you got to see your, your real season. You're training for your real exactly. season, which is coming. Exactly. And so go hurting yourself for pride's sake is, is, um, crazy yeah. so yeah and so that's a good 
you know, that's true. I mean, that's true with most of us that we want to compete. We want to do well, but it doesn't do any good for us to hurt ourselves. That's going to be an injury that we have to maybe deal with long term, short term, the impact on our life. So yeah, it's it's good to work, but smartly. You know, be, be smart with how you go about it. Yeah, so, goal, I mean, the goal is yeah. to get in better shape to improve so we can yeah. improve our longevity. Yeah. And if you're pushing too hard and you hurt yourself, I wouldn't say you're you're moving towards that goal yeah. of longevity. Well, and I think, to, you know, I, I work out and do all this stuff to play with my grandkids, to yeah. carry your grandkids, to not be carried around, if if at all possible. What it, What's in my control? And so injuring myself with a with a pride workout, will put myself, it'll, it'll defeat the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do. And that is to have mobility, squat, yeah. lift stuff, um, you know, and so forth. So you're, you're smart, you're young, you're young, wise beyond your years yeah. with it, because it is, it's a, it's a case where the injuries you've had, you'll, you'll have to manage, but any additional ones you're going to, you know, carry for the rest of your life. And for you'd sure. rather not do that. So yeah. that's the so, answer. Um, yeah. One of your, Part of the question is how has coaching like yeah changed or affected me as a person um i think i answered the athlete part of it okay i think as a person you know i came in wanting to give back to this community mm -hmm. um it was a little intimidating at first because this community is so strong and i've like been a part of it in the past but not as somebody who's done it like long term over the course of many years consistently like it's been on and off for a couple years um so I think for me as a person, like joining this community, being welcomed with open arms by the coaches, by the members, being accountable to the community, like me, I have a lot of free time right now because it's my off season, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah. But having yeah. this community of people where I feel like I'm being productive in my off season, I feel like I'm accountable to a group of people and I need to come and be my best self every single day. Yeah. Even if I'm not working out or even if I'm not coaching for that day, like that's been such a huge thing for me this winter mm. and as far as like myself personally being productive this winter being a part of this community is like exceed my expectations mm. and that's why i wanted to get into it in the first place like i had said is i wanted to be a part of a community during my off season and i knew that joining this community not just as a member but as a coach and taking that step where i can give back a little bit more i knew that that's what i was like looking for yeah and so that's why i did it but it's like far exceeded what I was expecting in terms of the support, the the relationships that I've made, like just with other coaches or members, like the relationships that I've grown and like cultivated, I guess you could say it's been, yeah. it's been amazing. I think I'll have lifelong close friends so long as I keep like coming back here in sure. the winter and sure. like who knows where life's going to take me, but yeah. Yeah, it's been incredible. That's I'm good. So, I'm well, so blessed. Well, and, and, and whether it is just for the moment and life takes a different direction, you still have those interactions. Yeah. You still have those bonds that, you know, started when you were younger, but they continue on. And if life takes you somewhere else, maybe it returns you back to Linden yeah. or back to the area. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, and I will say as a member, I appreciate you as a coach and, and, and you're older now. When I remember you, you're a, young young man yeah, and now you're a grown up yeah. and, and and have faced a lot of, you know adversities in life and you've experienced some life you've i will tell you as coming up on 60 you have a lot of life ahead for <laughs> to sure. experience yeah. and so um but that's so cool yeah so i just want to say thank you yeah. to the i love the community for yeah. for taking me in yeah. for treating me as one of your own for embracing me for buying my homemade sourdough bread you guys <laughs> yeah are, absolutely you know, i'm feeling the workouts with that bread uh, yeah <laughs> that's very awesome. cool so, thank you so much we've talked about well we hit a little bit about injuries you can share well how much you want or not well i'll cut out what's necessary but you you mentioned have mentioned previously you've had quite a few injuries and surgeries i recall you saying something like 10 yeah 10 plus 10 surgeries from 2014 through 2022. Okay. And a and you had a shoulder surgery and I did happen to check your Instagram out with your your shoulder surgery. Was that rotator cuff or No, so I'm a, I've had eight shoulder surgeries okay. four on each shoulder. Most, going all the way back to high school. To 2015. Was, was that my first shoulder surgery? Okay. So from 2015 through 2017, 
I had four surgeries on my left shoulder okay. for torn labrums. And then one of those, the fourth of the four surgeries was to remove a couple, or I guess it was one screw that they had put in my shoulder. Okay. They put two in there and one of them was like being rejected. So they went in and took the one of the screws out. And then I eventually injured my right shoulder in 2018. Uh, so I had a couple re-injuries, a couple more surgeries on my right shoulder. And then the most recent surgery was in November of 2022. Is that labrum also? Labrum, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just due to dislocations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's genetics. I don't know if it's just like me not doing the right things to get my shoulders healthy. Strengthened, uh, strengthened or strengthened. where they it's, need to be. I'm sure yeah. me playing through multiple shoulder injuries in college uh, yeah. in football was not the brightest idea. Yeah. Um, going back, I would change a couple things, but... Yeah. I try not to live with regrets. Okay. Sure. Well, be thankful. Yeah, I was going to say, be thankful yeah. that you're in surgery today because the surgeries of 30 years ago would be far different. Your ability to, you know, with the knowledge that we have and the knowledge that's around even here, uh, shout out Amar and, uh, you know, and so forth with Everstrong and the, the other is physical therapy. They know better how to help manage yeah. those and how to, you know, put yourself, put yourself in a position of success down the line. Yeah. So... Yeah, so so you had the surgery, healthy now? Yeah, I feel, I mean, knock on the way, my shoulders feel really good. Okay. And I think for me, movement is medicine. I think if yeah. I were to sit around and be afraid of moving, being afraid of re-injuring them again, like, yeah, I need to be smart, obviously, but yeah. uh, I think I'd end up feeling worse than yeah. me coming here and pushing it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think just the... With the functionality of CrossFit in, in terms of how it's programmed here, um, I think my shoulders feel better than they have in a long time. Good. Hopefully that continues. Hopefully, uh, I mean, with how many injuries I've had, sure. it's a lot more common for a re-injury to occur. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm working to not have happen. Yeah. And that's why I work so hard in the Well, and, and, and just watching you do, I mean, you know, people with eight sur surgeries from four on each shoulder doing push-ups, you're over there doing push-ups in this workout you programmed and and set up and it's like that's great to see because yeah. a lot of times people would be like yeah i'm not even touching any kind of shoulder movement uh, yeah you know, i mean I, if i did that sense. i think my shoulders would feel worse I'm yeah. Fine. The, yeah obviously the i need movement. to be smart and avoid certain things but yeah. the movement and kind of pushing it to regain my strength and yeah. mobility under load like that's that's where i feel the best and I learned uh, from Omar again. Shout out Everstrong. You got you're getting better mobility because you're you're getting you know, that that uh, range of motion under load. Yeah, uh, exactly. in where you can. So I did learn Omar if you're listening. So <laughs> what was the longest recovery from one of your surgeries or shoulders or uh, knees at all? No knees. knees um, I had two other. I broke my leg when I was a senior in high school. Okay. Uh, so I had two surgeries on that. The first one was to repair it and then put some screws and a plate in. And then okay. the second surgery on that was to remove the plate and screws. Okay. Uh, probably six months later. Okay. So that was the first of my two surgeries. And then the rest have been on my shoulders. Okay. I think the longest recovery, um, in terms of getting myself to be as healthy as possible, uh, I would say came in a surgery that I had in 2019. Hmm. So in 2018, I re-injured my right shoulder in spring ball of our football season. So it was like late April, dislocated it, went and saw my doctor who had done a couple surgeries on my left shoulder at this point. And we decided to do a reconstruction surgery called the ladder J procedure, which I had done on my left shoulder, despite the one screw coming out and then having to or remove it. The ladder J procedure made my left shoulder feel very stable, mm -hmm. strong, and I had made it through a full football season with no issues with my left shoulder. Okay. So when I re-injured my right one, uh, my doctor and I were like, hey, we think the ladder J procedure would be the, a good idea to do for my right shoulder. So hopefully it would respond the same way that my left shoulder did and have no issues. So this is one of the things maybe I'd do a little differently, but I had surgery in June of 2018 on my right shoulder, ladder J procedure, and then... After a few months, my doctor was saying, like, hey, there's a chance you could play in this 2018 football season, like, three or four months after your surgery, mm -hmm. which at the time, like, didn't necessarily seem right. I was like, how can I return to play football yeah. four months after my fifth shoulder surgery? Granted, it was the first one on my right shoulder, but still, five shoulder right. surgeries, like, that's, right. that's a lot. That's, the, um, that's aggressive thinking. Yeah, especially for, like, 
the position that I played, strong right. safety, played down in the box a lot. So I'm banging in with the 300 some pound old lineman covering 250 pound tight ends. I'm reaching to make tackles. I'm reaching to make plays on the ball. Like not very conducive to keeping a shoulder in socket yeah. if you've had some issues. So uh, eventually being the competitive person I am, you know, the coach is telling me they wanted me to come back. If the doctor's clearing me, my doctor telling me I'm good to play. I eventually came back and played in some of the 2018 football season, which was my senior year in school. It was my fourth year yeah. at Central. Yeah. Uh, played in some games, was playing pretty well. Felt like I was continuing to make progress physically, but also on the field, like as an athlete, as a player. Um, and then in one game, I made, came down the field, made a tackle and dislocated the shoulder again. And when I did that, with the latter J procedure, they like move a bone that's in your kind of under your collarbone. Mm -hmm. They move it to block the front of the shoulder from dislocating again. Okay. It's kind of like a little bone block. Right. And they screw that bone in to mm -hmm. a location. So, okay. When I dislocated my shoulder in the 2018 football season, after my first surgery, the bone block broke off. One of the screws bent in half and broke. And the other screw bent at like a 45 degree angle in my wow. shoulder. And wow. I would say that was like the most pain that I've ever felt in my life. Sure. At the time, it was painful physically, but also yeah. uh, I was laying on the field in the game, writhing in pain. And I was like, yeah, it's like the, my career's over. You, 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 you knew. I knew. At yeah. that point. Um, and just like, I don't know if you've ever dealt with a shoulder injury, like it's pretty brutal. Sure. Dealing with the injury, the recovery, the surgery, like it sucks. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, in my mind at that time, pain, yes, but the emotional pain of like coming to terms with like, hey, my career's over. And then me thinking about like, I'm going to have to go through this whole surgery injury process again. Again. On top of like, now what am I going to be working towards? Like, my career's over. You right. know, it was, it was challenging. Yeah. And so I think like that, that recovery was probably the toughest, I'd say, physically because mm. the pain that I was feeling was the worst. Um, I knew, like, I was around my teammates. I was around my team every day still, yeah. knowing that I could never play football again, um, knowing that I still had a couple more years of eligibility left, even despite yeah. me being a senior. I was able to graduate early. I think, yeah, just... Did it, you know at that point, though? I mean, you knew on the field you were thinking that, but at what point did you know? Because you, did you play another down of football? No, that was yeah. it. When did, you, when did you know... You were done. I mean, you realize was, on the on, on the field, you're because I've any injuries, and not not college, but you, you're like I, my 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 uh, career, whether it's high school, or whether it's done. Yeah, I knew right away. Yeah, I think I had kind of accepted, like, hey, if I get injured again, I'm done. Part of me wishes I would have called it earlier, but like, hey, my doctors tell me I can come back. I'm competitive, and like, if I'm being told I can I can be cleared to play, like, yeah, I'm gonna be. Yeah. Um, looking back, yeah, I wish I w maybe would have been smarter about it. Maybe took a that season off and come back and played a couple more years. Yeah. Who knows what would have happened? No, no, no. But it also, I'm also, you know, anybody who knows me and hears enough of me talk about there, there are reasons. I'm, I'm, there are reasons sure. it happens, and so it's not a question of what could have been, what if. Yeah. A lot of what ifs in life, but it's led you to where you are today, for sure. And and, and the ability to relate. I mean. I'm thankful for your willingness to be open and talk about it because sometimes you just want to ignore, like, you don't want to deal with it. It's yeah. like, it's, you've already gone through it to rehash it and such. But I think it's important to know, maybe the, there's a, somebody out there that's going through this right now and is going to have to make that decision based off of what you're experiencing and what your experience has been. Yeah. Um, what helped you? So, you know, you it was a tough recovery. Uh, not just physically, but I'm sure mentally, emotionally, you're just like, you're done. I mean, at yeah. this point, what is that? Your eighth surgery, 10th uh, surgery, ninth surgery? At that surgery? point, no. So I've had, since that injury and surgery, I've had two more shoulder so, surgeries. So that would have been your eighth. It would have been my two, sixth shoulder surgery, two, my eighth total surgery. Eighth total surgery. And so, yeah, you're just like done. Yeah. I mean, I'm over broken bones. I've broken pretty much every bone on the right side of my body. You know, two concussions on that side, one concussion on, to the left. My left side's pretty healthy, one broken bone, but I'm over broken bones. I haven't had any, like, surgeries like you have, but, yeah, I do things based on I don't want to have to recover from a broken bone. Even if, even if I was younger, I'm like, you're done. You're done. And so what helped you come out of it? 
or recover or um, other than just time. But yeah, I think time. Um, I think having a good support system, family, friends, and then there's a theme for, for me in college where I, because of all these injuries that I've had, I spent a lot of time at the physical therapist in Ellensburg right. um, and I developed good relationships with a couple of the physical therapists there. And mm. I think they don't get enough credit for what they do physically, but also like physical therapists are motivators. Like they're, they can almost be like emotional therapists in a way um, because they're there to help you with your physical injury, but also like they're there to help you improve mentally and emotionally as well whether or not they mean to like they do mm -hmm. and you know you go in every day and like there'd be days where i did not want to be there there's days where i was very down and like not motivated at all and like they'd come in with a great attitude and they'd kind of snap me out of it um so i think that helps me a lot uh also at that time like knowing that my career was over it was like all right it sucks it wasn't what i was planning but like i'm gonna graduate early mm -hmm. so now what like kind of thinking about my future and I don't want to say it was a relief because I don't remember feeling relieved that my career was over mm. but also like just the excitement of what was next the unknown of what was next like I was going to graduate college and like move on mm -hmm. and move forward with my life um it kind of created some excitement I would say yeah and around that time like I didn't have any plan for a job I had no idea what I wanted to do the opportunity for me to become a graduate assistant for a football team was yeah. like something that I I wanted to do I think mm -hmm. just so I could stay around the game and yeah I wasn't ready to like leave college football yet even though I wasn't playing anymore like I thought maybe I would want to coach college football um mm -hmm. I feel like coaching is something I've been good at yeah. for most of my life you know growing up coaching like a YMCA team when I was in high school yeah or helping out with my younger brother's like Raz Fest team, three yeah. on three basketball team or yeah. whatever it was. Like I you felt a call a call to do that. And, and yeah. you had great excuse me, you had great examples, obviously. You you can fall back on your dad, coach excuse me, coach Karami, um any other coaches that yeah stick out? Really good college coaches. Um my position coach at Central for three years, Nate Johnson. Mm -hmm. Uh, my defensive coordinator, Scott Power, who coaches at Central Michigan now. I think it might be Eastern Michigan now. Okay. He's the defensive coordinator there. Uh, my head coach, Ian Shoemaker, kept giving me opportunities despite these injuries. I believe he's the offensive coordinator of Hawaii now. So I had really good college coaches. There. People, that, people that care for you is not just a player, but a, but, but, but as a person, person, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah, for yeah. Sure. And 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 again, those are those are things that. You know, you hear so much of a grind of coaches, but the really good coaches, and you see a lot of them out there. You just maybe don't recognize yeah. it at the time, but they're the people who make you better people. Yeah. I also know. want to shout out Coach Benny Boyd, who's at the University of Wyoming now. I had some great college coaches. And uh, so I think for me, what helped me get through, like I said, was physical therapy, kind of the excitement of the future. Yeah. Um, eventually, the opportunity came for me to be a GA graduate assistant at Central. Okay. And then eventually the opportunity came for me to be an intern, which is like a graduate assistant. Yeah. It's just I wouldn't have to go get my master's degree. Okay. I have that paid for yeah. by coaching. Yeah. Uh, the opportunity to be an intern. So I would get paid like a, I think it was like 12, 1300 bucks a month um, to be a an intern football coach at the University of Minnesota Duluth came okay. up. Okay. Uh, so I had like a connection there via an old coach and, um, at that point I was like, you know what? Like I was very scared to make the decision to leave and like go move to another part of the country. Sure. But I just felt like I needed to do it. Yeah. Um, so, and you got to experience probably a bit of the cold of the Midwest. Yeah. Fortunately, uh, <laughs> I wasn't there for the heart of the winter, the so. brutal winters. Yeah. yeah. So I graduated yeah. early from central in March of 2019. Okay. Um, I had surgery on my right shoulder in January of 2019, and I told my doctor, I was like, hey, I'm moving to Minnesota in, like, mid-March of 2019. Like, we're having surgery, so, in January, so by the time I'm moving, like, I'm not in a sling anymore, and I can, like, start recovering. Yeah. yeah. So, scheduled surgery in early January of 2019, moved out to Minnesota, to Duluth yeah. in March of 2019, got there in time for a spring ball. Uh, I was the assistant defensive backs coach and intern. Okay. Uh, kind of in charge of the cornerbacks, the yeah. corners. Yeah. Uh, so I moved out there in March, and then I was out there until December. Okay. Um, so I missed, like, 
December, January, yeah. February. I really feel like March. you. I feel like I want you to take a season off a of fire and go experience a real <laughs> winter. I mean, it's the reason I don't live in the Midwest. I loved it because I experienced all four seasons, and I knew what I loved and what I didn't. And yeah. So when snow falls here, I tell people, go to Baker. Don't make don't make me suffer anymore because i experienced seven you know six yeah. seven months of winter yeah yeah i don't know duluth yeah. is a beautiful place yeah university of minnesota yeah. duluth is yeah. it's an awesome school yeah. uh, when i was there their hockey team yeah hockey in the ncaa is like one level yeah so even though they're a division two football school and other yeah and other athletics their hockey team was d1 and they the were fantastic team. did you get to you were able to watch yeah so games? that's the year i got there they won the national yeah. championship it was their second in a row yeah they had a bunch of guys get drafted into the nhl yeah. so it was like really fun to go there kind of be a part of like northern minnesota hockey culture and like be amidst that and then just like be on my own again yeah this time in a different state doing something completely different yeah um, did you do that just for a year then yeah, I did it for so I got there in March and then left in December. Okay, uh, I could have stayed, but it yeah. just wasn't. And then, I decided and then, it wasn't for me. And then year. after you experienced that, you and then is that did you move to fire service around shortly after that or? Uh, shortly after, yeah. So yeah. Uh, um, I left Minnesota and right before Christmas in 2019. Okay, and I think my idea at the time was to move home, be back in Washington for the first time be back in, I guess, Western Washington up yeah. in Whatcom County for the first time since I graduated high school, be back here. And, uh, I was interested in going into like education. So like teaching yeah. and coaching. So and I, your degree is, is psychology. Psychology. Um, okay. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, at one point I had to declare a major. I was interested in psychology, figured that Whatever I ended up deciding to do would require some type of graduate degree and mm -hmm. psychology would be broad enough to get me into any program that I wanted to. Right. Unless it was very specific, like uh, anything relating to science or something that required more science classes. But I figured the psych degree would be very applicable to many graduate programs. So I yeah. moved back in right before the start of 2020 and I got a job working at Meridian High School as a paraeducator. Okay. And my idea was work there until I could get into like a master's program for teaching, get my teaching certification and yeah. then try and get a job as a teacher. Well, I started at Meridian high school in February of 2020. And then in March of 2020, COVID hit shut down all the schools. So I was still getting paid, but I wasn't doing a whole lot for the school. And there you have it. I apologize if it seemed like another abrupt ending to the interview. I realized that for talking for two hours plus, that there wasn't an exact cutoff point that we got in such a great conversation that there was sort of no great point to cut at, but that felt like it was a good time to uh, talk about his kind of journey from teaching high school and COVID happening to sort of what was next for Lucas. So you'll have to stick around for part two to find out where we pick back up again. Uh, there are certainly a continuation of the discussion that we had there towards the end. So again, apologize for the abrupt cutoff, but uh, wait for another day or so after this comes out and you'll be able to catch right up on the second part. Again, thank you so much to my guest, Lucas Peterson. I hope you learned a lot about him and his journey and the process. And maybe you can take away a few tidbits for your own life, uh, whether it's about perseverance or life changes or maybe things that are meaningful to you. It'll be different for other pe uh, different people, but hopefully you garnered some stuff from him. It was a great, great chance to talk with him. Again, this was only part one, so in part two, we'll get into his ultra running, his firefighting, uh, wilderness firefighting career, and talk a little bit about the Helena Hotshots, of which he will be leaving here as you listen this week. This interview is... Uh, going to be coming out on April 9th. Lucas is actually leaving later this week to head off to Montana to begin that that uh, season of his year, which is uh, Helena Hotshots, firefighting outside in the woods and wilderness. And I know you'll be excited to hear, as I was interviewing him, to hear uh, information about that.
Again, thank you so much for listening. Just a quick call out again. If you could like, subscribe, share this with folks that may enjoy it and maybe would be inspired by all of the inter interviews and interviewees that I've had so far and share it with your family, your friends on social media. If you could, uh, we're on YouTube now, so we have our episodes on YouTube. You can look for Converse Craigle or just search in YouTube for Conversations with Craigle and you'll find all of our episodes there. We're also on Instagram, Conversations with Craigle, and you can also email us. I will put all the notes down in the show notes, including uh, a lot of information from Lucas, including uh, his highlight film from, I believe, his senior year of college football at Central Washington. Thank you again so much. Again, as I always ask you to do, be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. When you have a chance to help or serve, please do. It helps the world. It helps you. And it helps the collective of us as the human beings and human race. I hope you have a great day and a great week. And I look forward to sharing part two with you coming up here real soon. Thanks so much and take care.